this is so fun, Brianne. I am so excited for you to be with my three and four star diamonds. These are incredible leaders. And so I can't wait for you to get a chance to talk to them. They're not afraid of you. They're gonna ask you a lot of questions but before doing so. Let's introduce you. So this is my dear friend, Brianne Wetzel. She's an eight star diamond, three time elite coach, 64 months in a row of SC. She is a mama of three. And what's funny, Brianne, when I was thinking about this, I'm like, she's a mama of two girls. I'm like, <laughs> she had a baby boy two years ago. <laughs> she, she's married to Brett and they live in Texas. Um, but how about you give us a little bit more about you, if you don't mind, before they jump in asking you questions. Yeah, sure. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I have um, been a coach for, gosh, five and a half years now. Flew by. Um, especially the last couple of years, I felt like for the longest time I was like, Oh, I'm in this like almost three years. And all of a sudden I was like, wow, it's five years. Um, let me turn this off. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I am a mom of three, two who finally go back to school a week from today. Uh, my house is chaos. I have a daughter going into fifth grade, a daughter going into first grade and the Baby boy is 19 months, and I'm hoping his nap will continue through this call. Um, but yeah, we live in North Texas. We moved here uh, almost three years ago. My husband and I are originally from the Northeast. Um, yeah, I started out in this business um, as a discount coach who signed up for $40 because um, I didn't know we had challenge packs, and I couldn't afford Shakeology. And... Uh, my mom had originally introduced me to this business. It was like, oh, I think you can pay $40 and save some money. Um, and I was like, okay. So I paid the $40, then I bought Shakeology, then I bought a program. Um, so I spent a ton of money to join that I didn't know that I had to. Um, and that was really it. I never got into this to, um, to make money. We were super financially strapped. Um, when we started, Brett had been out of work for like three months, um, uh, about six months before I signed up as a coach and we were a one paycheck family. So we almost lost our house. We put everything on credit cards. We were like, I tell people broke was like a step up from where we were. And, uh, my mom had introduced me to Shakeology and I was like, I, and like selling stuff on Craigslist to buy diapers. Like I do not have, at the time it was $119 to buy Shakeology. And she was like, there's a money back guarantee. You can try it. If you don't like it, you can get your money back. And I, uh, my birthday is in December and I had gotten gift cards and stuff for my, my birthday. And I used that to buy a bag of Shakeology with every intention of drinking the bag to satisfy her and returning it. Like I had every intention of doing that. And you know, what happened to me is what happens to all of us after you drink Shakeology for two weeks, you kind of start to feel like Superman and you're like, wow, like I, what, like what am I, I was like, what am I going to do now? So that was really where this whole journey started for me. It was, I had to figure out a way to afford it. And I didn't know anything about the comp plan, but I was like, well, if I get three people to just buy Shakeology, it covers what I want to drink. And in the beginning, that was how I built my business, um, which was all retail, was three people at a time um, by saying, okay, if I, if I sell three, if I get three people to buy Shakeology, I get to drink mine for free. If I can get three more people to drink Shakeology, I can get another bag this month for my husband, who at the time was 45 pounds overweight. Um, if I get three more people to buy it, then I make a hundred dollars. And I just sort of used, used it that way to sort of say like, let's do these things. And once I would make 90 or a hundred bucks, I could be like, wow, I could put this towards groceries or I could put this towards a bill. And it just sort of snowballed. Um, and I just told people, you know, I had no training. We didn't, we didn't have the coach training Academy. We didn't have any of the resources in the old office. Um, that we even had there for the last couple of years. And it was really just me telling people, oh, if it's too much for you, you can do what I did and just, and just pay the $40 and then you get your shake for $89 instead of 120. And I don't know if it was because I had no fear about it, 
but that was how I built my whole business. Um, was just telling people like I'm broke and I figured out a way to kind of afford this. Um, cause it's really, really good and you should do it too. Um, and that's sort of how I just kind of grew my business. Um, I don't know where you want me to go from here. Right? <laughs> no, that's good. That's so, I have a little partner in crime. I but, know. No, that is so good. Um, and don't tell her she gets groomed in an hour, but don't tell her that. Okay. Squirrel moment there. But okay, so this is good. I love how you opened with it. I love you. I love the fact that your mom introduced you to it because when does that ever happen, right? It's like we normally have to convince our parents. It's like, no, your mom had to convince you. So it's really cool. Yeah. Um, but I would just say this. So as you all know, you know her credentials. She knows she's an eight star diamond, three time elite. She is a very successful coach. She's a mama of three. She does this actually a lot on her own because her husband does travel a ton for work and he's gone a lot. So there's a little more backstory. Um, but what questions do you guys have? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Please ask in person if possible. I'll go. Yeah, please. Okay. So being a mom of three and especially in the summer, how do you, I guess, structure your, <laughs> try to find the balance between mom, wife, coach? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Uh, it's a funny question, right? <laughs> the last two weeks have been a little harder than they were at the beginning of the summer. Um, let's put it that way. At least at the beginning of the summer, we had camps and stuff. And now everybody is, uh, my kids are climbing the walls. We had a massive heat wave here. Um, for the last couple weeks and I'm like looking out the window and it's super dark and I'm like, please let it rain. Like I would love nothing more than for it to thunderstorm for the next five days so I can get stuff done. Um, it's really difficult. Um, like I don't pretend to hide, I have all the answers. Um, what I do, um, and I can send it to you, Britt, if you want to share it is I do a lot of, um, instead of power hour, because it doesn't, an hour to an hour and a half of uninterrupted time, especially in the summer, usually does not happen. Like I'm watching the baby monitor now to see if like I'm gonna hear him before we even get through this call. Um, because once he's down for a nap, like I've gotta, I've gotta get my workout in, I've gotta you know, shower if I have like people to see during the day. Um, so I do a lot of power pockets. Um, I'm a big, pen and paper to-do list person. I like to cross things off. If I put to-do lists on my phone, I don't check them. Um, so I always have a list of like what I need to get done in a day. And it's basically, it's whatever notebook I have open this week that I'm writing in. It's like nothing. I don't have like my to-do notebook. It's just like, okay, I've got to make sure that I get like 30 invites to Instagram people and I've got to get 15 invites to Facebook people. And I've got to do, you know, um, check into my groups and the coaching opportunity posts and check into my sneak peek. Like I'll just list everything that I've got to do in a day. And whenever I've got 15 or 20 minutes, it's usually when I fire those off. I tend to do, um, like my Instagram invites in the morning. Like I'll get up, I'll make coffee. Um, if everybody's already up, the baby will sit, he'll have, you know, he'll sit on the couch with me and have, you know, his Cheerios and his cup. And I'll just sort of sit and fire off invites, you know, while he's watching a show first thing in the morning and I've got my coffee. Um, I usually get up before my kids to do like my PD or any reading or, um, <clears throat> answer any emails because I need to, to focus. Um, and then it's really just you've got to just try to find the time through the day. I, especially in the summer, um, now that I'm in this business so long, I don't like to work at night. Um, I get very tired by the end of the day. Like my brain is just done. So I like to sit and relax and like read an enjoyable book at night. So I try to get everything done so that once I put the kids to bed, I don't have to come back into my office. Um, but that's recently, I mean, for the first three and a half years, I was in my office every night from seven 30 until 11 or 12 working. Um, and it's just now that I'm like, everybody needs so much of me. I need like this time for myself. Um, what do my Instagram invites look like? They're super simple. Honestly, I sent them to one of my coaches yesterday and she was like, Oh, 
That's it. It's very simple. All it says is, is I, and I start with the people that are watching, um, my stories because they're the ones that are actively sort of checking stuff that I'm doing every day. So I start with them and then I'll move to the people who have liked posts that either have call outs or, you know, information about a challenge group, but it's super simple. It just says, wait, where'd it go? Hey girl, I just wanted to thank you for following my journey here, heart. I am starting another virtual bootcamp on Monday. Would you like to hear some more deets? That's it. Super simple. And I try to send more on Instagram because I don't feel like it's as personal unless you've really had conversations with people back and forth. Um, but if they're watching your stories, they want to know what's going on. I kind of like that you can see that because it's a little different than like, are people creeping on my posts? Are people creeping on my Facebook posts and not liking them because they don't want to like show it? Um, so I always stick to those first. I do a lot of um, like questions and polls and all that stuff to kind of get people on my stories. And then always those people that are an answer them, even if it's like a no, I'm not interested, I'll always message them and be like, you may not be interested in what I just talked about, but there's some reason that you follow me. And that can always start a relationship um, from there with them. I want to follow up question with that. Since obviously kids are going back to work, happy dance, or back to work, back to school here very soon, right? So what is it going to look like now when you have a little more structure? Okay, so during the school year, I try, I say try because I am not a morning person, you guys. I hate getting up early more than anything in the world. But once I do it, like I feel so accomplished. Um, so I try to get up. I set my alarm for like 440. So I'm out of bed like by 5, 515. Um, and usually my husband is up that early. So during the school year, it's a little easier because I'll get up with him and know like I have an hour-ish, an hour and a half before everybody starts to need like breakfast and everything to get ready for school and I'll get up and I usually will always do I'll come in here with my coffee and I'll do reading I'll do emails I'll check into my groups I will um, kind of do follow-ups anything that doesn't require messaging people at five in the morning so if I've got groups to set up if I've got stuff to sort of schedule I kind of do all of that first thing um, for the first time this year, I've never had childcare. I've always done this with all of my kids at home. Um, so for the first time, I have um, a nanny two mornings a week, just for three hours at a time, just to give me a little bit of a, a break that I can sit in here and really sort of focus and do calls and everything. Um, so the majority of my day while they're at school, a lot of the time um, is not super structured because I've always had the baby around. So it's either he plays in the office here while I'm trying to work. I schedule calls for nap time. Um, but I try to get everything done by two 30 before I have to go and pick up the kids. Um, because there's no way anybody's getting even a text returned from me between like three and like seven. Like it's just not happening. Um, my kids are in activities. We drive, we're driving all over the place. Um, and then usually at night during the school year, um, especially with parents that work full time, I usually will come back in here. Um, not for long, 45 minutes usually, and just check, go back through like emails of people that like have tried to get me during the day. Um, but while I don't have a specific set schedule, I'm super purposeful with my time. And I think that's the biggest thing. Like it doesn't matter how busy you are, but if you only have an hour or two hours through the day, you, you have to be super purposeful with your time. Like I hear my coaches say like, I worked for three hours today. And I'm like, okay, what'd you do? Like how many invites did you send? And they're like five. And I'm like, look, what did you do for the other two hours and 57 minutes that you said that you were working? Like you have to be purposeful with your time. So like I will take, you know, um, 
like an hour on a Sunday and I will auto, you know, I'll schedule challenge group posts for like three or four weeks. Like I'll just take the time and do that. So it's done. Um, so then I don't have to worry about it in the mornings. I just go in and I check and I can interact with people. I will set up, you know, sneak peeks, you know, a couple weeks in advance. So I know that it's done. Like if you're just purposeful with the time that you have, and if you're like, okay, I did everything I was going to do today. Good. Invite more people because all it's going to do is continue to sort of spin that wheel. Um, but I find the, the biggest struggle I see is that coaches are like, I, I don't have, I don't have time to do anything else, but they can tell you everything that's happened on Orange is the New Black. They can tell you everything that's happened on Game of Thrones. They can tell you everything that's happened on every single show that's aired in the last six months. And I like to watch TV too, but for me, it's like a reward instead of like, well, I'm going to do this. And maybe if I have time, like I'll get around to it. Okay. Now it's your time for questions. I love the purposeful and I love that you create boundaries. I love that. Okay. Coaches, unmute yourself, ask questions. Oh God. I have a question. Um, first of all, thank you for spending your time with us. You are awesome. Mm, thank you. Um, I totally stalked your, your Facebook last night too. And <sighs> Your family is so cute. But, um, so my question for you, um, I was curious cause I'm trying to find the balance of, um, like I have these, you know, big onboarding goals and I'm recruiting a lot of coaches, a lot of people every month, but then I'm trying to find that balance to still being super present in my challenge groups, obviously, and delivering a huge, um, I want people to get so much more out of our groups, right. Than they're paying for. And I'm kind of trying to figure out how, the best way to do that is. So I was wondering, um, how many groups you run a month, um, on average, like how many people are in those groups, what platform you use, and then just any tips you can give to like how to make sure that we're just delivering like the best in our challenge groups. So, okay. I run our, we have had an ongoing to be mindset group since, since the program launched. Um, and we made the decision. I made that decision myself and I brought two of my PS coaches in with me who were the only ones who wanted to part to wanted to participate with me in doing it. Um, we offered a team wide group. I offered it to all my PS coaches. I had two who said, yes, I'm in. And I was like, good. And we're going to be the ones to do it. Um, we set it up with the units so that the posts are there and we leave that ongoing because to be mindset is definitely a lifestyle. Like it's not a group that's going to start and end and we're constantly adding new people into it. So I feel that that is great for them because they can see people who have been doing this for three months now. They could see people who are still in their first 30 days and sort of people in between. And when you see people, it's like we're 90 days in now to the first group of people. So we've seen some people stick with it. We've seen some people have a really good first 30 days and then life happens with the summer and now they're sort of like, okay, I didn't lose any weight, but I didn't gain any. So I know that I'm doing the right thing. So it's, it's been helpful for people to see that. So I've left that group completely open and ongoing and we probably will because we just keep adding people to it. Um, I don't know how many are in there now, maybe 150 or so um, over the last three months. Um, we did a sneak peek for to be mindset. Um, I did not do one for lift four because my group of people were still so focused on this that I was like, I can't, I couldn't switch gears. It wasn't going to be beneficial to me or the people that I was trying to reach to go right into a new program. Um, so instead we talk about it in there. If you feel like you're ready to add an exercise or something four days a week, you can sort of get in. So the posts are set up in there. They're already done. So between the three of us, we go in there, you know, somebody's in there at least once a day commenting and checking on, you know, checking on everybody and welcoming the new people into the group. Um, we have a lift for group that's team wide that we're in week, I think we're in week two now of that group. Um, and are you using for these? Are you, so, for to be mindset, you must be using Facebook because you said mm -hmm. units, right? Yeah. So, and then for like your lift four group, are you, or do you just use Facebook across the board? Or? I usually only use Facebook when a program launches. I always do a program on the tracker um, because I will always send an email to all of my customers to let them know 
if they're not on Facebook, they have the opportunity to join with the tracker. And then in, every January, we, I set up, or well, it's in December, but I set up one 365 day group on the tracker so that it's always opened. So that every month when my customers get an email from me, it's always like, if you just need a general place to track your stuff, this group is opened. We can invite you at any time. So we have months that that, that, that group is super active. And like the last six weeks, it's been pretty dead because everybody's either to, doing 2B mindset or lift four. Um, that kind of ebbs and flows. And I get the alerts on that. So it's easy for me to make sure like at least once a day when I go in to log my shake, that it's there. Um, I do sneak peeks usually twice a month. Um, I open them to my whole downline. It depends on, you know, who wants to jump in. Um, but I do a very simple sneak peek. It's one day. It's, um, I usually will set the group up. I will add people to the group either Saturday night or Sunday. There's like an intro post to introduce yourself. Um, Sunday night, I go live Monday morning. Very briefly, I don't think people like to sit on lives, especially people they don't know. Um, so I go live in there for 10 or 15 minutes and talk a little bit about the business so they can kind of get to know me. And then it's like five posts, um, one each hour through the afternoon. I leave it opened. Um, to follow up with people and then we just leave that group open. I delete all the posts and we do it again two or three weeks later, depending on the month. So the people that are in there stay in there and they continually see the same information over and over and over again. We're just going to beat it into their heads until they decide to say yes and we take them out of the group. Um, but that's basically sort of how, um, we're structured. Do I post in the tracker? Um, I schedule the challenge group posts in the tracker. Um, I always will make sure that I share when I'm doing, when I'm posting like my workout and my shape, when I'm logging in in the tracker, I always will share it to the feed. Um, occasionally I add extra posts. Um, that depends on, like I said, how busy that, how busy it is, you know, for the month. If it's our, if it's our big year long group, it just kind of depends on how busy it is. If nobody's in there the logging stuff that month, I just log mine. And once people start to come back and log it, then we start to, you know, interact with all of them again. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Hi, Brian. Hi. Um, so as far as your team, how do you have that structured? So do you have like, do you have a team page? Do you collaborate with your leaders to run that page? Or do you have your leaders kind of break off? Um, how do you kind of have that structured? So I post a monthly calendar in our team page. Every month I make it the banner. And then um, for things that they're all gonna be invited to, like this summer I, we've been doing an, um, like a weekly like Instagram training series. Like I've been doing a, a training each week on how to utilize Instagram. So they do, you know, I do events in there for those, um, events in there for the power hours and, you know, posting like this is the start date for this group. I open it up to the whole downline and whoever wants to participate is more than welcome to. Um, so I really leave it up to them. I have some leaders who have sort of branched off and then they came back and then they branched off again and now they're kind of back. Um, and then I have some who are like, I'm just going to kind of do my thing. They are not in this to build a massive business, but they're super steady diamonds and they've got like their little group of people and they just kind of go and do their thing. And I think all you can do is you guys kind of grow into like these leadership roles is not try to like micromanage. And just sort of say like, listen, this is what's available. It's here if you want it. If you feel like you're ready to branch off and, and you want to do this with your team, like I'm here if you need help. But other than that, like, you know, go for it. My job is to make sure that they have stuff that they can invite to if they have coaches who are struggling with figuring out what to invite to. Mm -hmm. um, but you can't. 
push them out and you can't say, stay with me forever until the end of time, although we would love it because it's great for engagement. I wish more would sort of see that sometimes. Um, but sometimes you have to sort of let them try to branch out and sort of fall a little and say, maybe you trying to run a leadership group with five people isn't the best idea yet. Maybe we should all do it together with 40 or 50 people. And then you can sort of start to branch off um, and do it yourself. And you kind of have to just sort of let your leaders kind of figure that out. Um, some will stay with you forever and some will kind of say, I'm good. I got it. Like I'll find you um, if I need you. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. So What's I love, oh, sorry. sorry, go ahead, Jessica. You go, girl. Sorry. Really quick. Sorry. <laughs> I love, um, I was going to say in your sneak peek, I love that it's five posts and simple. Uh, that's something that I've really been trying to do in all areas of this business is simplify things. Would you mind uh, sharing with us what those five things are that you post about? Because I feel like sometimes when we're talking about coaching, it's hard to like, you know, we want to give everyone all the information, but then it's way too much information. <laughs> yeah, I find, and that's the thing is I, you will find um, that I don't begrudge anybody who's super, super creative and super talented when it comes to like graphics and inventing different groups and stuff like that. I am super simple when it comes to pretty much everything. I use Google Drive and I use Canva and I use Facebook and Instagram. And like, that's basically it because I feel like even as much of all this stuff that I'm going to do, if my coaches think that they have to do all of this crap to be successful, they're not going to do it. And they're going to sort of freeze. Um, so for me, it was always, that it wasn't about what worked for me. It was about what's duplicatable for everybody. Um, because if you can teach people that it's, while this business isn't always easy, it's always simple, you'll get a lot more duplication out of it. Um, my sneak peek is, let me see. We have, I have one open actually. Let me see if it will let me share my screen. It will. It hopefully will. Okay. So let me. My computer says it because I live in the middle of nowhere and when it's cloudy, our internet doesn't work. Okay, so can you guys see this? So my, so usually I go live Monday morning. You heard me say that I went live Monday night because Monday in my house was pure chaos. And all of a sudden it was like seven o'clock and I was like, holy crap, all these posts went up and I didn't go live. So real life, right? I got on and I was like, listen, this is what I look like at the end of the day. Here's what we're going to talk about. So it's super simple and I'm happy to share these. Like it's honestly, you see these graphics, you guys, how many times have you seen these graphics? Like this is nothing fancy. Um, so here is my welcome post and it just basically said, it's basically, you know, asking them to talk a little bit about themselves. Um, there's my graphic, which is not mine either. Um, so we talk about how it be, how, how coaching came to be. This is Carl's like oldest video talking about the coaching opportunity. Cause while it's super old, it's like one of my favorite ones. So there's that, that I share. There is myths about coaching, what we do. There is um, income potential and the disclaimers in there. We put it in there. Um, but um, so we talk about how to earn money, the income potential. And look, these are from, these are not coaches who are all top earners. Like you have somebody here, yes, she makes $3,000 a week. But here you have somebody who is making $600 a month. So it shows all different aspects of what you can do with this, depending on what your goal is. Maybe you have somebody who doesn't want to work 25 or 30 hours a week at this business to get to five or $10,000 a week. Maybe you have somebody who just wants to work to cover their car payment. It's totally possible and it's totally doable. 
Um, and then we have the, like, again, the types of coaches, because I'll always share, um, usually today is Wednesday, then tomorrow, um, we'll go in and I'll share and I'll talk about like the upcoming challenge groups that we have. If maybe they kind of like what we're about, but they're not quite ready to coach. We talk about the groups that we have available. So this is obviously just the types of coaches that we have. And then the options that they have to get started. And that's it. Like it's super simple. And then I just delete everything. And a couple of weeks later, we do it all again. So, to, so either tonight or tomorrow, I'll go live in there again and I'll talk about, um, you know, what's available to them as challengers if they want to sign up. Um, and I have all these in a Google Drive. So if you guys want that link, you're more than welcome to take it. Um, it's, like I said, nothing fancy, but this way it's all there. So if my coaches want to, um, I have newer coaches that bring their prospects in and then coaches who have been around for a while that want to start to do groups on their own, but aren't quite comfortable with it. They like to do these because they only have to go live once. And it's sort of a great practice for them to say like, listen, go live, tell your story, be very quick about what you're going to say. You don't have to plan an hour long live. Um, my one at the beginning is usually, um, 15 minutes or so. Um, and a lot of times we have people say like, well, how do we earn money? Um, and this is something that I cannot take credit for. I have to credit Amanda Dewey for this because it was brilliant. If you guys don't know who she is, you should totally follow her because she's, Fred will tell you, she's amazing. She is a dear, dear friend of mine. We get together when our kids will allow um, to do sort of work sessions. But we were together a few weeks ago and she was like, I thought of this for my sneak peek and I want to make sure it makes sense before I, before I go live and I talk about it. And she goes, we talk a lot about the two bunnies with 2B mindset. She's like, what if we did it for the business? And I was like, well, I'm kind of intrigued. Tell me more. So she said, you know, we have all these different ways that we get paid. And we get paid, you know, we get paid commission and we get paid the subscriptions and we get paid matching bonuses and cycle bonuses and quarterly bonuses and fast start. But like, there's all these different ways. And if you try to explain that to somebody who, even a newer coach, let alone somebody who's never heard of our structure before, it can be super overwhelming. Right. And I'm like, well, yeah. And it takes freaking forever. I mean, have you guys read the comp plan? It's like a bajillion pages long. So she was like, so I thought for my sneak peek, I was going to explain it this way and tell me what you think. She was like, we make money. There's two, we call it the two bunnies of the business and we can earn money through regular clients on a retail commission or helping people start a business and earning residual income. And I was like, well, that's brilliant. Like why have none of us thought of this before? Like, and then you can explain the residual income. There's so many things that go along with it from weekly bonuses to getting customers to monthly and quarterly bonuses that you'll all learn about as you progress through the business. So it's letting people know that there's all of these opportunities to earn money, but if there's somebody who literally just wants to retail, they can totally do that too. Um, so that's how I explained it in the video because it's super quick. And I let people know that when we're talking about residual income, we're talking about multiple ways to earn residual income. And that usually will always get the wheels turning for people to say, well, wait, like how many different ways are there to earn? And then if they're interested, you can have that conversation with them, but you're not going to sit on a live for 45 minutes and talk about every single way that we break down the comp plan, because then people are going to be like, wah, wah, and like they just drown it out. So, um, I always try to keep that live pretty short. Um, and it doesn't matter if nobody's on it because they'll come back and watch it. You don't have to worry about that. And if they're not on it, sometimes it's better because it's great practice for you, um, to not feel like you have to all of a sudden say what people want to hear, get on, say what you have to say and get off there. And I usually will put a post in, um, sometime in the middle of the day on Tuesday and I'll be like, Sometimes Mondays are crazy for people who got to watch the live and who checked out the first post and that's it. And a lot of times people will be like, Oh crap, I didn't even see it. I'm going to go back and look 
now. And that's why I always leave that open. So I leave those posts up for um, usually a week or so. Um, this time we're not, I usually do them every other week, but we are doing, um, we're trying out a flash sale that Trina Gray talked about um, in two weeks. So we're actually bumping the sneak peek back to the, the last week in August. Um, so I probably will leave those posts up for a week or so. Um, let people go back and look at them. And through that time, I'll go in once or twice, whether I go live or share a post or share something to sort of keep people checking the group. And then we delete them. We add all the new people back in and we start again because I find there's so much power in repetition. Like if they're seeing the same stuff over and over again, eventually they're going to be like, okay, now she's gone live in here three or four times. It's a little different each time. Sometimes she's put together. Sometimes she's in pajamas. Like maybe I could kind of do this. Um, and honestly, if it's not broke, don't fix it. You're only putting five posts in there. Why are you going to shut down a whole group and open up a whole new one? Because then you lose all of those people. So if you just continually add to it, eventually you've got a sneak peek with a couple hundred people in it. And at that point, if you happen to get five or 10 people at one time that are super engaged, that's going to make that group show up on everybody else's feed. And out of nowhere, you're going to it's going to sort of roll with that momentum we keep talking about. Does that make sense? I totally went off tangent on that, but I think you asked how I structured my mind. Like, uh, that's, that's, totally, that's, that's, that's how the works. I have um, just a follow-up question with that. So when you add new people to the, to the group, like, are you um, getting them through like Facebook posts? Like, are they commenting or are they entering like through a form or like, how do you, um, like, is it just people that you're randomly like having conversations and then you just have like a Google spreadsheet where you're just like typing all those people in and then when the group opens, you just add all those people or like, how do you um, I suck at spreadsheets. I'm the worst person ever with spreadsheets. I can fill them out without screwing them up. Like if you give me a spreadsheet, like we're doing a massive, I don't know if any of you, I don't know what downlines any of you guys are in, but if any of you guys have coaches or uplines that are involved in the firefight project. Um, we have this massive spreadsheet for it. And I went in and I was like, Oh, I'm going to, could somebody just make columns for me that I can go like, I am great with math, terrible with spreadsheets. So you're giving me way too much credit with that. Um, again, super simple. If you go and you look, I do a lot of call outs on Instagram. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot. Because Instagram is such a moving platform um, that you have to constantly be doing it. Um, and if you follow hashtags on Instagram, it's a great way to sort of see what people are looking for. Um, so I'll always phrase my call out a little differently. Um, but usually what I do, is I have one that's I, I put up in the last couple of days. You guys can go and look. Um, but I usually will say, um, sometimes it's like a help wanted and it said, and it'll be like, leave your email below without the dot com because that way I think Instagram won't um, hide, it won't shadow ban the posts. So I always have them leave it like without the dot com. Um, and I'll collect emails that way and I send them an email. And again, it's nothing fancy. I will gladly share it. Um, and it just basically says if, you know, thank you for, for um, you know, either answering that post or, you know, you said that you were interested in this. Um, here are the parameters um, to be able to check out this business. You must be 18. You must not be working with any other coaches and you must be in the US, UK or Canada and you must have a desire to help people and be hardworking. And if this is you, this is, a this is a requirement of the process to become a coach on my team. You must join this group to check out the information. So it brings them to Facebook, they click on the link, they get a friend request from me, they join the group. Um, usually I do it that way. 
when I am running a sneak peek, um, I try to align one of the sneak peeks with the monthly email that goes out to my customers. Because in there, I always include, if you are a, if you're currently drinking Shakeology and would like to save money, you can learn more here. The link. If you would like to learn about what I do and help people that you love on their journey with health and fitness, you can click here to join. Some sort of wording like that, I always include it in the email. Do I get a ton of people that come from my emails, like my, like my customer leads and my customers? I get one or two a month, but it's better than zero, and I'm sending the email anyway. Um, so I try to line that up with either the first group of the month or the last group of the month um, that I'm doing as far as the sneak peek. Um, I don't, I intentionally do not do a ton of sneak peek promotion on Facebook because there's so much of that there already. And um, we talk a lot about it in our challenge groups that we have this group. If you want to learn more, it's one day. You're more than welcome to come in and leave when you want. Um, but usually that sort of inviting to a sneak peek is going to happen through um, a private message. Um, do I send a message to those people? Sorry, I think I'm bad. I think I'm behind on this. Do I send a message to those people individually in the group? Teresa, which, I'm sorry. What is that? In the uh, sneak peek. So you have to. I do. Every once in a while, I do. Um, depending on how many joined that week, um, if they didn't interact at all, I will send them a message. If they like, I see that they saw all the posts but um, they didn't necessarily comment on them. I'll send them a message and I'll be like, I just wanted to touch base. I know sometimes it can seem like a lot of information. Um, you may have scanned over it, except I stalked the post to see that you saw them. Um, just specific questions that I can answer. Um, if they commented on any of the posts, even if they just introduced themselves and didn't do anything else, I'll always message them and I'll say like, Hey girl, like I know that you, we saw you right in the beginning, but sometimes, and that's why I purposely do it on Mondays because it's my excuse to say, um, I know Mondays can be crazy for a lot of people, but I didn't want you to sort of, you know, um, kind of get lost in the shuffle of this group going. Um, so I do message them. Wendy, is she still here or did she leave? I just saw her question. Oh, is she gone? She left. Okay. Well, you can tell her that I do stories on both, <laughs> that I do call outs on both. Um, I tend to tell my coaches that um, when you're using Instagram, Instagram values quality over quantity a billion times. So if you go and you look at my Instagram feed, there's maybe one post a day in my feed. Sometimes I skip a day. But what you wanna make sure is that your photos that you're putting on Instagram are good photos. So like, today's my day, I, it's my rest day. So I showered, I put makeup on, and at some point today, I'm gonna make a couple different shakes, and I'm gonna do a couple different things, and I'm gonna change my shirt, and I'm gonna take a handful of extra photos and I'm gonna save those because you're gonna want quality photos for your feed. And then stories are like your be real because it's 24 hours, it's like the behind the scenes. Um, so I do, I'll do call outs on there. Um, I will tell people like, have you, been, have you ever wondered about what I do? Yes or no? Would you like to learn more about what I do? Yes, hell yes. Like, and then from there, I'll message those people and I'll invite them to a sneak peek or you just to put the, the links if you have the swipe feature so they can swipe up and just join right into the group. Sometimes I'll attach a form. Um, I don't usually because if I swipe up and I see something I have to fill out, I'm like, okay, like, I don't want to do that. It's too much time. Um, but yeah. And I sent your answer to her. So, Wendy. <laughs> no. 
No, this is good. And I love the fact that you literally say that. And I know many of you coaches do that, but take multiple pictures. You're done up today. There's no reason to like, I, I, I just, I love the realness of it. And I love the fact that you said stories are the behind the scenes. Like you can be whoever you are and you don't have to look perfect, obviously. No, um, most of my stories are me like lounging on the couch with my kids and I'm like, I'm trying to get work done and I have somebody like climbing over my face or you hear me yelling at my kids and I'm like, I'm trying to, do, I'm trying to do something. Um, what's your favorite what's thing about coaching? What's your favorite thing about coaching now? Oh, that's a good question. Um, probably, um, the people. Like it really is. And I say a lot of the time, um, do we still send those little blue books when people sign up as coaches? If we don't, then my whole little thing is, see, there we go. So I used to tell people like the, the friendships and the relationships that you make are not in that little blue book that they send when you sign up as a coach. Um, and the reason that I say that is because we want to surround ourselves with really great people, right? And None of us have all the answers. Believe me, I do not. I am still learning. Um, I am still failing constantly some days, way more than others, um, in all aspects of our life. And um, for me, my favorite thing has been after the time that I have put into this business, that um, there are... always coaches who even I used to look up to, but I still not used to that. I still look up to that will say, I think this is great. Let's collaborate on something together. Um, if you asked me four years ago, what year are we in? Four, <laughs> four years ago when I was pushing for elite for the first time, trying to get to five star, trying to figure out what I was doing. Um, if you were like, girl, it's going to be hard. It's going to be this crazy journey. But four years from now, you're going to be running a training group with coaches like Christine Dwyer and Melissa Hudgens and, you know, Leslie Davis and Shelly Heim. I'd be like, what? Like, no, that's not, that's not me. So to be able to have friendships and relationships with people in this business that, um, really just want to constantly collaborate, I think is the best thing. Um, our mastermind that we have with, with Brett, it's a, our five to eight star mastermind. There's a handful of us. We decided that for the summer, since nobody jumps on team calls in the summer, that we were going to, um, a handful of us and gosh, I don't even know how many of us are in this message thread. It's, it's, there's like 20 of us, um, that we were going to all team up and do a summer series of team calls together and invite all of our teams to somebody who had a massive Zoom and really utilize people like Joel and Isabel. And um, of course now I can't think of anybody else that we've had on there, um, but we had Jen Richardson come on and really to sort of have people collaborate together. Um, I was somebody who always sort of struggled with finding a success partner. For me, they kind of never always worked out. And um, I'm the strangest type A. I'm very chaotic and messy, but I'm a crazy control freak, um, which is why I don't have an assistant or anything and just will do everything myself. But um, to have other leaders that you can collaborate with um, where everybody brings something different to the table, I think for me is the most exciting thing because as you grow in this business, um, it's very tough for some to sort of check their ego and not, not in a bad way. Like you see success and it makes you feel good and obviously, but when you think that you know everything is, you know, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. So for me to be able to surround myself with people that I have always looked up to and learn even one thing from them and understand that my coaches, as great of a leader as I may be, 
my coaches may not resonate with everything that I do. So if I have the opportunity to put my coaches in a group with all of these other leaders, they're not going to leave me because they resonate better with another leader. No, they're going to, my coaches are going to become more successful. And even in the way, if you may do a power hour different than another leader, and you may have a coach that resonates better with that. So I think as you guys grow into these leadership roles, if you, you know, start combining your efforts, whether it's something simple like let's do a 10 day push to Emerald together and sort of, you know, that breeds more engagement than five of you running a group with five people in it. Okay, well, you five leaders come together, everybody do two posts a day, and you put 40 coaches in that group, and it's going to grow, and it's going to help that engagement and that momentum. Um, so instead of all of us running our own individual training groups, we've got 20, there's, a, there's, a, there's usually not that many of us, we have 27 leaders running this Firefly project that we, have, so we kicked off on Monday. And, um, we've got a thousand coaches in that group, um, which is a lot, but if you team up with a handful of leaders, you guys all bring something different to the table. Um, and it's something that I definitely don't see in other, um, in other MLMs and other companies. We see so much competition and, um, I love that this has brought so much camaraderie um, because it'll fill your cup to just hear how somebody does things. Um, if their wording is a little different, it may just be something that you may resonate with a little better because you, maybe your upline didn't phrase something the way that you would speak, or maybe your coach, um, you know, you tend to be, um, more soft-spoken and your coach needs somebody who's going to say, here's what you need to do. Go do it. Like they need that, that tougher sort of thing. When you collaborate with other coaches, it helps you sort of have all these different voices. Um, so in all honesty, I mean, that's my favorite. I mean, obviously seeing people have success, like seeing people have successes, I love, but being able to sort of have that community that I think a lot of us have always sort of longed for, for me is like the best thing because as an introvert by nature, I get to do it all in my pajamas. I don't have to go out in the world and like people, but I have this whole community that, um, you know, is always here. Um, so as you guys grow into those roles, utilize each other. Like you'll be so much better for it in the end. I have a follow up question. Are you ready okay. for this? Yeah. That was, that was really, really, really good. Um, so my question is, is what would you say? And it's not really a follow up question, but I feel like it's a perfect question to mirror what you're kind of saying, I guess. I don't know. Um, what, what, what piece of advice would you give the, now I, I believe Justin jumped off. So these ladies that are still here with us, what, kind of guidance or push or motivation would you give each of these ladies that are working hard by the end of the year? Like, what would you say, you know, as far as going after a goal, working towards five star diamond elite, like what would you say to them to further their goal this year? Oh, um, you are enough with or without the title. The title right. is amazing. It's fantastic. But you have to have confidence in who you are before you get that title. Because if you don't feel like you're enough without it, you are not going to feel like you're enough with it. Oh. And it's not going to feel good. It's going to feel icky. It's going to feel like I don't even know why I have this because I don't, I don't feel like I deserve it. Um, be open with your teams and explain why you want to push for this goal. And you're going to have hopefully a ton of people that are going to jump on board with you. And you're going to have some people who will say, yes, I'm totally in. And then they'll disappear. 
or you're going to have people who are not going to answer you and you're going to feel like, well, maybe they don't care. And truth is they may not, but, um, if you guys earned the rate, did any of you guys earn the Rachel Hollis call? Okay. So you remember that she said someone else's opinion of you is none of your business. Mm -hmm. That to me, I have been somebody who struggles with being a people pleaser my entire life. It is something, it is, Britt will tell you, it is always my biggest struggle. It is always my struggle of what are others going to think? How are others going to do? How are others going to react to what I want to do, what my goals are? And it doesn't matter. If that's your goal, figure out a way to make it happen. If you don't have enough coaches right now to make it happen, go sponsor more. That's, that's it. Because ultimately, yes, it's dependent on your, on, on your coaches helping you accrue those points. But ultimately at the end of the day, all you can do is what you can do. And if it doesn't align with what you do, then don't do it. Don't do it just to get the title. Do it because it makes sense for you. Um, if you're a newer coach, if you're in two or three years, it makes perfect sense. But when you're in six, seven, eight years as a coach, sometimes you have to sort of weigh where you're at in your business. But you have to make sure that it feels right for you and it feels right for your team. Um, but at the end of the day, all you can do is control your actions. Um, the third year that our team hit elite, I had tossed in the towel in what was it? Brett September. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I was like, I'm not going to hit it. I'm not going to get there. It's my points were not there. I wasn't going to hit my ATV. Um, I didn't think I was going to hit my ATV. I didn't have enough. Uh, I don't know. One of the categories I didn't have enough in. And I was like, I did the math and I was like, I'm like seven months pregnant. There's no way that this is going to happen. I don't have, I didn't have enough working coaches that were going to hit success club or sponsor enough to, or retail enough to get those points that I needed. And she was, she knew, she knew that something was coming, but couldn't tell me what. And she was like, please, like, please give it one more month before you really throw in the towel. And we were at leadership. And I said to her, like, I, I can't, it's the middle of October. It's not going to happen. I'm pregnant out to here. Like, I don't have the energy to do this. And she was like, just listen. And they came out with how many challenge packs was it? Was it, it was like 12 or 15 or it was close to 20. It was a lot. It was a lot. But if you sold them and got them enrolled in the challenge tracker app, you would get this massive multiplier for your elite points. And I was like, oh, well, I can control me. Now, you guys, I am not a huge success club person. I hit success club every month, but aside from the 2B mindset launch, I hit success club like 8, 10, 12, you know, sometimes 18. I'm not a huge success club person. And I think we had, they announced it in the middle of, so I think I had like six weeks to sell like 20 challenge packs. And I was like, I don't care if I'm pregnant out to here now. I don't care if I'm tired. Like if it's all dependent on me and my effort, I can do it. And, um, I did it in the hospital in labor, getting those last two challenge packs. I'm not even kidding. You can ask her. My son was three and a half weeks early and it was the last Wednesday of the year. And I went in for a checkup and they told me I had to go upstairs and have a baby. And I was like, mm -mm -mm. and I called her and she was like, you have all day. Um, but the point is, is you can, you can control your efforts. You can't control what your coaches are going to do. You can give them all of the tools and encourage them, but the action is up to them. That was way off tangent, but you have to just focus on what Kim, Kim Carver will always say to you, control the controllable. Because if you worry about 
oh my God, this coach said that she said that she was going to do this. And she said that she was going to do this. And she said that she was going to do this. Like, I never want to be that person to call somebody and be like, you said you were going to do this and it's going to screw me up if you don't, because that's, that's not, you know, yeah. Bless and release. Like you have to just, um, you know, we always say you have to meet your coaches where they're at. And that's fine. And I respect where they're at, but then those same coaches also have to respect the goals that you're pushing towards. And you need to dedicate yourself more to the coaches that are going to help you achieve those goals. You know, I'm not saying dismiss your entire downline, but if I have, I have a coach who I opened up, um, I'll tell you guys this and I'll explain why I opened up, um, a quote unquote mentorship, which was basically, I was going to allow two of my coaches to get a one hour one-on-one with me once a week through the entire month of August to really help them push their business forward. And I had a newer coach who signed up and went Emerald and hit success club immediately apply. I had, um, a lifetime diamond who is maybe a coach away from getting it back. And she's been back and lost it a few times in the last couple of months. She's been diamond for about three ish years now. Um, apply because she wants to get to, wants to get back. She wants to help her coach get to diamond. She wants to step more into a leadership role. Then I had a coach who, um, has every excuse in the book. She's a lifetime diamond. She, um, is wonderful. I've known her for 20 something years, but it's always, I don't have is the preface of every sentence that comes out of her mouth. I don't have any working coaches. I don't have the time. I don't have, you name it. And I said to her, this is not where you need to be. You need to work your business for, she's been, she's been disappeared off the, off the planet for four months now and then comes back and wants to do this. And I said, you need to, um, get back into your business. You need to work your business and be consistent and do all this. And then we can have that conversation. And it comes from people saying like, you want to work with the willing, you want to work with the working. And if you have coaches that are putting out the effort, then match that. And there's nothing wrong in sort of protecting your energy in that way. And that's something that has taken me a really long time to learn. Like you don't ever want to be the one dragging them or pulling them or going back to these same coaches. Like you can't water dead plants and we love them and we're here when they're ready, but you can't force them. It's just like challenges. It all comes down to timing. Oh, okay. I feel like I had to drop the mic a couple times or my pen, but that was so good. Okay. Well, let's wrap this up. I appreciate you all staying on with us. I love your questions. Brian, you are amazing. I love all your words of wisdom and I couldn't Mm. say more than an amen to your last answer on what they need to do to push forward. And I love the fact that you're tying, like this has to be a goal that you, when you get there, it's going to feel good. It's going to feel very rewarding, but having that belief and that energy and that excitement towards it needs to obviously be there first. So I love that you said that. Yeah. You have to sort of look at the goal as how am I going to feel when, when I achieve this goal, not, Oh God, what's everybody going to think of me if I don't do it? Mm-hmm. Like what's it going to mean for you? And what's it going to mean for you? It's going to show your team that it's possible but it has to also make sense for you and for your business and for your life and for your family, because your view, what you view as success is not what I view as success for anybody else tends to view, um, as success. You have to figure out what it looks like for you and go after that. And maybe it's rank, maybe it's elite, maybe it's income, maybe it's everything. Maybe it all makes sense for you to do it all at once but you have to sort of figure out what it's going to look like for you um, and stay in your lane, you know, while you do it. So um, you're amazing. You're I love amazing. It. And we're going to end that there. No, thank you. Thank you for your time. I absolutely adore you. I mean, obviously oh, I'm happy to you guys. And honestly, like I'm always, you're right. You can always message me. I will, I will send Brittany all of these links 
um, today at some point. Um, they're just all Google Drive links. They're super simple. Um, but if you guys have any other questions, honestly, you can always message me. Hopefully I'll see that my messages are a mess, but you can always. And if she doesn't ever get back to you, just message me and then I will message her. <laughs> she'll find me. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank for you for having, having me, guys. You are so welcome. We'll see you all very soon, okay? Bye. Bye, ladies.